morning. Good morning. Today's call to worship comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 5. The greatness of God. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says God. Speak kindly to Jerusalem and call out at her that her warfare has ended and that her iniquity has been removed, that she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice is calling, clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness. Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. <coughs> Let every valley be lifted up. Let every mountain and hill be made low. And let the rough ground become a plain, and the rough terrain a broad valley. Then the glory of the God will be revealed, and all flesh will see it together. For the, mark, the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're still in the brown book, and we're on page 415. And the same, all three verses of victory in Jesus. After this, you follow the blue book. What? I want the four. Okay, I have it backwards. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. 
Oh, so. cheerfully. And we thank you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, anybody tell you at some point you're going to have a crown? Uh, yeah, I just uh, point at me and I'll <laughs> you do it now. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> I know it's over here. I'm standing right next to him. Sorry. Tell him what it is. I mean, it's... Oh, this is for the Operation Christmas is that what it is? The yeah, Christmas yeah. box, I think. Christmas yeah. boxes to go to the kids around the world. American House. The what? The Samaritan House. American House. Samaritan House. Oh, Samaritan House. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay, let me pray for over, over this. So, Father, we thank you that you bless us in a way that we can give back. And we thank you for this opportunity to give, and this will go to people around the world. We pray that this. Uh, this will touch their hearts that will draw them to Jesus, help them to know who Jesus is just through this gift that we give cheerfully, Father, that we give to you so that this can go to all around the world. We pray that your gospel will be furthered and this would be a blessing to many, many people. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry, it's American first. American first. Not American. Not American. <laughs> Franklin Graham is the one that is over mm, this. Okay. He's done this for years. Good morning. Look at your prayer list and see, uh, see if we can lift anybody off and maybe want to put on a new person today. She has to do before they can ever attempt this 
heart transplants. Okay. I mean, even right down to going to the dentist, everything, colonoscopy. She has to have everything before they'll touch her, you know. Make sure she's in good health. Yeah. Uh, Other than yeah. being a heart. Yeah, that's about all I know for now. Okay, uh, how do you know are they coming with their uh, money? Where they go fund me? Oh my goodness, I don't know. Last I heard, um, well, I think my check got lost in the mail because it's been gone long enough that she should have had it. So I'm uh -huh. gonna wait until Friday and then rewrite our check uh -huh. to go because she didn't get it. Uh -huh. And I said, I said I read uh, hundreds of things to that uh, box, yeah. you know, and it just hasn't come. So okay. and I'll rewrite mine on Friday. But I think they've at least twenty three thousand. That they've done already? Huh? That they've done already? Oh, yeah. What, what, what do they need? Uh, what do you mean, what they need? How much oh, money? they was trying to get maybe like 25000 I think, was their first the, um, gesture to get to that point. Yeah. And I'm sure, I'm sure that they're really there by now. Yeah, that's awesome. For sure, but. Uh, that's great. How old is Ronnie? She's 50 years old. Yeah, let me show you. Oh, no. I didn't even think she, I thought she was a little older than that. I know she's close to my teenage age, Tina's 53. Yeah, well, so. Irene, Irene told me, I told her about you guys uh, uh, saying that she was older than that. She, I said, well, her mother told me, she said, yeah, maybe I should know, I think I was there. <laughs> <laughs> that still, that still don't seem right to me, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, let her mother tell us, huh? That's right. <laughs> okay, keep Ronnie in your prayers at home, day after day. She, she needs she needs prayers. Okay. Is there any updates on some of these over here? They brought Pam home. They brought Pam home. Kayla's house, but she's on hospice. Okay, she's at her daughter's house. Yeah. Okay. Randy, um, Judy Lamer's grandson needs prayer. He's um in Laporte Hospital. He's I don't know somewhere around 30, but I'm not sure, uh -huh. 32 maybe, I don't really know. But um, uh, he's losing blood, but I, I really don't know any details if they found out where that blood's going or what's happening. Cause this is Judy's grandson? Yeah, Judy's <laughs> oldest grandson, the one that would come to your house when he was little and made that movie of yeah. you remember? Yeah, I remember. Nick Caston. Nick Caston is his name. That's his name, Nick? Yeah, so he needs our prayers. Okay. And where hospital is he staying? Laporte. Caston, is that what his name is? Yeah. Okay, and Laporte Hospital. Okay. You got Janice on him for the cancer, but you don't have her on for the COVID, do you? No, I don't think so. I heard it's like okay. both. Pastor Linda said Clyde was really weak. Really weak? Yeah. He'll do that to me. Is there any others? Well, uh, as for uh, a little extra prayer for Roger Jackson, uh -huh. he's the one with the cancer, and we just got news uh, last week or so he's had a downturn. Really? Yeah, he was doing real good on the chemo and everything, but now he's starting to go down him. Oh. any others well I just like prayer for Chris's family they'll be driving home uh, Wednesday to come stay with us about three days for, for Thanksgiving so I just like traveling traveling plans for Chris because I heard on television how many people's going to be traveling you know and more more in cars than anything yeah. and it's going to be a lot of people on the roads Anybody got another one? No? Let's take these to the Lord in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for this day. And we thank you for each person that's come today to worship you, Lord, and to fellowship with one another. How we look forward to that, Lord. Thank you. And we want to pray for, for Dan. One day soon, he's having a, I forgot the day, one day soon, he's having a procedure on his neck. And it's for the shingles. Had him such a long time, Lord. And he's still got the pain. So we just put 
Dan in your hands, Lord. We pray you'll touch him and let this procedure work, Lord. Thank you. And we want to pray for Ronnie. We want to pray everything goes well, Lord, for her to get her new heart. Such a miracle, Lord, to thank you for having a new heart, buddy. So we just hold Ronnie up to you and pray that everything goes well. Thank you, Lord. And we want to pray for Pam. She's uh, home with her uh, daughter. And Lord, we just pray that she could have some good days. Pam's had a really, really hard time. So Lord, we put Pam in your hands also. Thank you, Lord. And we pray for Judy Mamer's grandson, Nick Caston, Lord. We just pray for wisdom for the doctors and the technicians, Lord, that are trying to find out what, what is wrong with Nick. And so, Lord, we just ask you to watch over this young man, Lord. Bring him back to good health, Lord. Thank you. And Janice and Clyde, Lord, touch them. This COVID is so very, very hard on people that have other things wrong with them, Lord. So we ask you just to touch Janice and touch Clyde and bring them back to good health. Thank you, Lord. And we pray for Roger Jackson, Lord. We prayed for Roger many times, and he was doing very well for a while, but now seems to be going downhill, Lord. So we just pray you'll, you'll touch Roger, Lord, and let him have many more good days. Thank you, Lord. And we pray for traveling mercies for those that are traveling uh, for Thanksgiving. Some of them are not going very far, some of them are going a long ways. Just put them, put them in safety, Lord so that nothing can interfere with their travels home. Thank you, Lord. Now we'd ask you to be with Dan as he brings us a message. Lord, let us each one listen to this message and apply it to our life. We ask all this in our precious name. Amen. Amen. Bring, um, not Kathy. We have one more we'd like to tell you about. Uh, Kathy Poss died about two or three days ago, and her mom was uh, uh, Judy Pops. And Judy went to church with us before they moved to Georgia. And then Kathy moved to Georgia also. So uh, we haven't really found out yet. We just know that she'd had a very bad year, a whole bad year or so. And she was uh, 62. So keep uh, Kathy's family. What was the last name? Uh, Kathy's last name was Cleveland. Cleveland, Kathy Cleveland. Her mother Judy Poss went here for a long, long time. Went to uh, went to church with us before she moved away. So and since then, her mom has died. They've lost. Uh, uh, she's lost a nephew. Kathy has, and now her. So that family's been struck in the last few years really hard. So keep keep them in your prayers. And Thank you. Uh, also, keep Mary in your. Oh yeah, keep Mary Mary Savoni, because there she is in another uh, state and uh, you know she's lost Bill and also Audrey uh, lost Steve so there's somebody else that we all know yeah. keep them in your prayers too and Teresa, too. Uh, and Teresa yes we've had so many last night I was sitting there cutting all the obituaries out of the market I was very shocked at how many I cut out so keep those families in your prayers
go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. As we look to your word, Father, I pray that you would open our hearts, our minds, and let, our, let your Holy Spirit touch us and guide us and just draw us to you. Help us to be closer to Jesus and more like him. And we thank you. It's in his name we pray. Amen. 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 We're coming up on Thanksgiving, just a few days away. So when you mention Thanksgiving, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Turkey. Okay, turkey. <laughs> we got turkey, food, desserts, family, football, watching the Bears lose. Yes. That was my family tradition for years. The Bears and the Lions and the Bears losing. Oh, to be a Bears fan. Oh, it takes faith. It takes endurance. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Through the years from the 70s, here we are. 30, 40 years later, it's the same deal. Oh. They're still losing. The worst part is that they do great till the third quarter, and it's like, ah, here's the game. <laughs> but how long do we consider the thanks, being thankful? Thinking about our lives, what the Lord has done for us, and with everything going on people coming and going, are we still thinking about being thankful? We've got to get our houses ready. We've got to get food ready. There's just all that stress that goes along with it. And this is another time I said last week, I'm going to mention it again, just take that breath. It's just a meal. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, you can have that turkey sandwich and be done with it if the cold cuts out it doesn't have to be a big elaborate thing you don't have to have 20 different side dishes to see each turkey all of these things going just take that time calm down streamline it don't worry about it god is good Amen. that's what we just have to worry about don't have all the problems psalm 34 says taste and see that the lord is good and blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. And that's what we, what we need to remember as we gather, as we come together to remember what he has done for us. James tells us that every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights. So we're gathering together collectively sort of just to count our blessings, just to give thanks knowing that everything that we have in our lives comes from him. Every good thing to the smallest thing that we take for granted. Just the sun coming up, just the most basic parts of life, the great, the smallest things that we just take for granted. These are all from God. And when we touched on last week, Thessalonians to give thanks in all things and in all circumstances. So we're going to be enjoying our family, our friends, be thankful in his love, for his love. But how many just consider Thanksgiving as another day off work? Back, back to, is it food? Is it football? These people that go that direction are just they miss the point and what happens is you just overeat and feel miserable and then get ready for black friday but for us we can be thankful and then overeat and feel miserable <laughs> but just that acknowledging that the lord has given us this he's given us family given us our church family he's given us life he's given us salvation and all the food and everything that we're going to be having over the next week and going into Christmas to just recognize who he is what he has done for us and then with all of that I'm going to go to the Psalms and Psalm 93 actually it says 93 and it skips 94 and then goes 95 to 100 are considered the royal psalms. I'm going to stick 94 in there because it follows. If you read through them all, it has the same flow. But what these psalms point out is God's attributes, his power, 
his majesty, you know, he is our avenger, our creator. He talks about our worship, about joy that we should have, seeing who he is and the power of our father. And last week when we talked about just, if we have the reality, if we actually get a grip on the reality of who Jesus is, what he's done for us, it changes our behavior. It changes our lives. And within that of itself, it gives us reason to give thanks. Just having the reality of who Jesus is. In Psalm 93, it says, the Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. And indeed the world is established firm and secure. Now going through these, I'm not going to read all of them. I'm just going to hit the high points in a couple of sentences. So 94, he is our avenger. He's the one that takes care of us. He's, it's the vengeance is mine. Those that would come against us, the Lord is our avenger. In 95, we sing for joy because he is our rock and our salvation. 96, because he is holy and most worthy of our praise. 97 says, let the earth be glad because he is powerful. <laughs> 98 says to sing a new song for he is holy and he has revealed to us his salvation 99 the Lord reigns and let the nations tremble before him so with all that now we go to Psalm 1 100 that's where we're going to camp out of that it's a it's a psalm for giving thanks and grateful praise and this kind of wraps up what the other psalms talk about grateful praise and giving thanks over all of the things that he is all of the characteristics of god and what he does for us it says shout for joy to the lord all the earth worship the lord with gladness come before him with joyful songs and know that the lord is god it is he who made us and we are his we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise and give thanks to him and praise his name for the Lord is good. His, lo his love endures forever and his faithfulness continues for all generations. So the Psalm tells us a few things. One, it tells us as other, other Psalms that lead up to this, shout to the lord so when they would have their services when they would come together they would worship it was loud their services were loud there was dancing there was a lot of different instruments going on this was a loud a loud service which would scare most baptists <laughs> <laughs> but we we're supposed to shout to the lord put it out there just like when David, when they brought the ark back in, David was dancing because they were bringing the ark back to Jerusalem. And this is where he was dancing. His outer garments were hindering his dancing. So he had to take them off. So basically David's dancing in his underwear because he was dancing before the Lord. He didn't care that there was other people around. He was praising God with all of his heart, dancing like nobody was watching. And they were told, this is not appropriate behavior for a king to be dancing in your underwear. And he says, you think this is undignified, there's more to come. But it was just his heart was overflowing with thanks and praise to the Lord for having all this other, he just had to dance. There was just, I couldn't do anything else but dance. So we lift up our voices, we sing to the Lord. And when we're singing, we need to sing from our heart. And over the years, trying to, well, trying to sing like I was today, trying to sing, I hear a lot of people say, I don't sing because I don't have a good voice. They get shy because, oh, my voice isn't any good. Well, that's the voice the Lord gave you, and he already knows what you sound like. So, belt it out. And if you think, well, I don't want anybody to hear me, so if you've got a bad voice, if the person next to you has a bad voice, sing louder to drown them out. 
<laughs> so what's going to happen is they're going to hear your voice and go, oh, that's terrible. I'm going to sing louder to drown them out. And then what do we have? <laughs> we have a joyful noise. <laughs> and we're singing from our hearts. It doesn't matter. The Lord knows what you sound like. Sing. Put it out there for them. Sing from the, from the heart. Listen to the words of the song and let them flow back out to the Lord as praise and to worship. It says, worship the Lord with gladness and come before him with joyful songs. So we shout worship and we come before the Lord is God. God is good. And we need to recognize him for who he is. And if we get to that point, we can't help but give thanks. We can't help but worship him. Now I've known, i would actually heard this quote where this person was checking out a church, went for the service, afterwards the reaction was, service was good, every sermon, everything, I like the church, the people are all right, nice. The worship time was too long. That was the quote. The worship time was too long. <laughs> what do you do in heaven with that? What's this saying? No, what's the amazing grace of 10,000 years? And it's, I can't remember the line, but we're going to be worshiping for a long time in heaven. If you were in an hour and a half worship service at a church and that was too long for you, heaven's going to be rough. <laughs> Warren Worsby says that a believer should be controlled by the Holy Spirit and the Word. And being so, we will be joyful, thankful, and submissive. We are submissive to the Spirit of God and submissive to His Word. And again, in all circumstances, be thankful. Always be thankful. Psalm 92 says, A song for the Sabbath. It is good to praise the Lord, to make music to your name, O Most High, proclaiming your love in the morning. And your faithfulness at night to the music of the tense ten string lyre and the melody of the harp for you make me glad with by your deeds Lord and I sing for joy at what your hands have done so in Leviticus when the Israel was taking laps in the desert they had to do sacrifices and one of the rules was they had to do a sacrifice in the morning of thanksgiving and in the evening they had to give an offering of thanksgiving so twice a day so they were in the wilderness to be reminded who god was they had messed up they had started worshiping the, the calf the idols they were complaining about everything so he had to remind them who he was for 40 years taking this big lap around the desert so everything that they had, all the food, all the water, everything that they needed, God supplied. So he's showing them, I am your source of everything. You're not going to have anything beyond me. So they had to give the sacrifice twice a day of thanksgiving to remind them to give thanks. And Psalm 50 says, he who offers a sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me. So giving thanks is a big part of what we should be as Christians. Having that atti uh, attitude of gratitude. Sorry. <laughs> Coffee cups are on their way. Attitude of gratitude. They'll be on sale in the lobby. But that's what we need to give thanks, to give, have gratitude towards the, life, the Lord. It should be a big part of our lives. They gave sacrifices in the morning and at night, sing songs of worship. They gave, they had their offerings, their tithes. They prayed, giving thanks to the Lord. Worshiping should be a huge part of our lives. It keeps us aware of who God is. If we're singing to him, <coughs> It's reminding us who God is as we worship him. And remember that he's the source of everything that we have. And we have this zero line 
where the basic things that we need, you know, the food, clothing, shelter, that's here. We live here, but we think here is here for us. You know, a big tragedy is when the internet goes out. But you've got your food, you've got your house, you've got shelter, you've got all of these things. But we think that the level should be much higher. God provides everything for us, including that internet, that supply. <laughs> How many times have I been in a house and the, the internet glitches up? How many times would you hear, Dad, the internet's out? And it goes through the house and you wait for it. It's going to be a chain reaction. This one's going to start and this one's going to start and this one's going to start. <laughs> Life is about to end because the internet was gone for 15 minutes. But God is the source of everything that we have, everything good that there is in our lives, regardless of if it's just the basic necessities or if it's the luxuries. We've been blessed into luxury. And he is the source of all of that. He's provided for us. So we have to work to get to that point of submission and dependence on him brings us closer. And as we worship, as we give thanks, we pray, we receive that confidence because we're closer to him. And it relieves that anxiety and helps us to face the day. That God is for us, who can be against us? Greater is he who is in me than he is in the world. It calms the stress of life. If we're told here in the psalm that we can enter his gates. We can go to him. We're allowed to come close to him. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise as we go closer to him and give thanks and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all the generations. This is an ongoing. This is a love that is not because of or if. This is his love endures for us forever and through all the generations. It's not a conditional he is a God of love, atonement, and salvation. And that alone, in itself, just that part, gives us reason to worship, gives reason to give thanks. And we have that, all these psalms, his love endures forever. He is our creator. He is our avenger. He is our atonement. So what does that all have to do with Turkey football, Black Friday? Pie, which is the best part of it all. Really nothing. All of these things are just reasons for us to come together and counter blessing. Reasons to come together and just recognize when we have all of our family together, <clears throat> that blessing. We're just that's just our reason that we worship him, we honor him, we praise him. We give thanks and recognize that he is the source of everything, that he is our provider, he is our God, and his love will endure forever. Let's pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for all that you give us. We can just look around, and all of your blessings are there. All of the things that you give us, that you take care of us. So much that you give us that we can't even, can't even list it all. Help us to be aware of that, Father, and just to give thanks, not just this week, not just through this season, but always and continuously, giving thanks in all circumstances. And Father, we just thank you. We thank you for the salvation. We thank you for Jesus, and it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. So as we come into this next song, if anybody doesn't know Jesus as their Savior, if they don't have that connection, that relationship, if you want to. You can pray, you can come forward, you can talk, we'll be here for a while. Okay, let's stand, turn to page 236, we'll sing all three verses of just the cold philosophy. We have two